each day that he deems best. Lovingly is part of pain and pleasure, mingling toil with peace and rest. Every day the Lord himself is near me, with a special mercy for each hour. All my cares he fain would bear and cheer me, he whose name is Counselor and Power. The protection of his child and treasure is a charge that on himself he laid. As thy day thy strength shall be in measure, Pledge to me he made. Help me then in every tribulation, so to trust thy promises, O Lord, that I lose not faith, sweet consolation, offered me within thy holy word. Help me, Lord, when trouble meeting and to take as from a father's hand one by one the days the moments fleeting till I reach the promised land and now let's turn to number 96 back two pages number 96 God leads us along
Some through the waters, some through the flood, some through the fire, but all through the blood. Some through great sorrow, but God gives a song in the night season and all the day long. And if you can take your Bible, please, and find the book of Proverbs. Proverbs, the last chapter, chapter number 31, please. Our memory verse is verse 25, and we'll repeat it together four times. You found your place then? Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 25. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. And let's pray. And Father, as the year is moving on, Today being the 129th day of 2022, the eighth day, Lord, we think of uh, so many who are away from us in uh, other places around the world. Pray that you will watch over them, and of course, no place we can go that you're not. So we ask you to watch over the girls in Mexico and watch over Fleur and Margie and the Philippines, Carlos and Carol and the boys as they make their way to Edmonton for a doctor appointment for Carlito. Pray for Edith and um, that she is in Edmonton also having appointments this week with her heart. Lord, we think of our dear Nita and Lord others in our church house that are having a medical uh, issues with uh, Pedro and Marjorie and Mrs. G and as we've already mentioned <clears throat> Edith all with heart issues we think of Mr. Consfort and uh, Lord his need of um, appointment with a urologist we pray for those again who are at work pray for those who are here home ill pray for the Malazos Lord on their way up being in a church that did not guard themselves. They have come under this flu issue and one of their daughters with 103 fever. And Lord, since they're living in a travel trailer, they will probably eventually all contact this. So pray for mercy and pray for grace and strength. And Lord, help us to be mindful. We have um, fevers and coughs and sniffles to remain at home so we don't affect others. Thank you for your protection, of course, and for your power. And thank you for your mercy and thank you for your grace that when illness comes to the choice born child of God, it's Lord thy will to raise them up or give them grace to endure. And Lord, as we think of grace, we think of grace in, in um, her mother and Edmonton. And uh, Lord, as her mother is in the throes of Coming into your presence, we pray you comfort the family, give grace and mercy. Pray now for all the classes, the boys and girls, the teaching of thy word. And may your word go forth this morning with power. And again, Lord, give us a good day as we celebrate around the world, those who celebrate, and we think of our moms. And Lord, we thank you for godly moms. So this morning, we pray that we might lift up the Lord Jesus, honor him, give honor and glory to him. 
But Lord, that we might be mindful of the, <clears throat> the jewels of a godly mother. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. If you keep your Bible open, Proverbs chapter 31, I want to read the chapter and get it before us. I don't always preach a Mother's Day sermon. Um, I do from time to time. But uh, this morning, I just want to get this familiar chapter to us. And sometimes we are so familiar with verses and chapters and books that we just kind of overlook things. But here in Proverbs, I want you to look at the uh, personal pronoun she and see what the Bible has to say about she and her and her husband and her children and others. So it's a tremendous chapter. And as you look into the chapter, you see the advice of a mother to a prince who would be king. What would you tell your son if he was going to be the king? And by the way, did children always listen to parents? And so here we have Solomon given a pet name from his mother. That name is Lemuel. And so she's going to speak to him, give him some information on how to conduct his life, and notice them. The words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him, and here are the questions and statements that she brings before him. What, my son, and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows, what shall I say to my son? Give not thy strength unto woman. I think he messed that up. 700 wives and 300 concubines. Nor thy ways unto that which destroyeth kings. It is not for kings, Olamu. It is not for kings to drink wine. Well, he had a problem with that if you read the book of Ecclesiastes nor princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and prevent the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of a heavy heart. Let him drink and forget his poverty and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the womb and the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction to the dumb, said Boom. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Good advice. Now, here are some of the jewels of a godly woman. She's priceless, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. We think of diamonds, but actually in Bible times, rubies were very, very special. So who can find a virtuous woman for her price far above rubies? Now her husband. The harder her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She doesn't spend all of his money. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. What a commitment that is. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ship. She bringeth food from afar. She imports. She riseth also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considers a field, she's industrious. She considers a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hand, she planted a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hand to the spindle. Her hands hold the distaff. 
we, we don't think about a distaff in our day, but here she's spinning wool or flax and making garments. She stretcheth forth her hand and stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings and tapestry. Now watch this. Her clothing is silk and purple. She dresses modestly. Her husband is known in the gate when he sitteth among the elders of the land. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 4 says, A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh a shame is his rottenness and his bones. She maketh fine linen, verse 24, and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened up their mouth with wisdom. She's not a gossip. And her tongue is the law of kindness, not critical, judgmental, or bitter. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness, not running from here the pillar to post, but being faithful at her home to her family. And here's her testimony. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excelleth them all. Favor is deceitful, beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord she shall be praised. So beauty is not always going to stay with you. And a nice figure. Give her of the fruit of her hands. Let her own works praise her in the gates. I want you to draw your attention back to verse 25, our memory verse. Strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice. In time to come. Now, Father, we thank you for our mothers. And Lord, we thank you for how they bore us. And Lord, sad to think that some of us, including this preacher, broke our mom's hearts when we were young, being little rebels and troublemakers. But we thank you for the consistency and the love and the care of a godly mother. I pray this morning that you'd help us to, as the Bible says, to give honor unto whom honor is due. Thank you for the ladies of our church who have chosen to be ladies. Thank you for my wife and her faithfulness to you and to me and for her godliness and godly advice. I pray, Lord, this morning as we set aside a Sunday, some opened up cards, mother's cards, Mother Day's cards. Some had flowers given to them, other items. But Lord, we thank you for the honor that you give to a mom. I pray now that you'll take the word of God and speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name I ask, amen. What's in a mother? We think of the word <coughs> woman. We realize that the word woman in the Bible is not a bad name. Uh, Jesus at the cross said to John, Behold, woman, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother. The word woman is found 360 times in 335 verses. Young man looking for a wife, be good to look at the mother of your prospective wife. 
be good to look at how she treats her dad. Does she respect him or disrespect? And then we also think of the fact that the word woman denotes a lady and a woman. And the Bible says that it was not good that Adam should be alone. I will make him a helpmate suitable for him. Now, go with me to the book of Proverbs if you're still there and go back to chapter 12 then. In chapter 12, we'll just look at some verses. <clears throat> chapter 12 and verse number 4. A virtuous woman as a crown to her husband. But she that maketh a shame is as rottenness in his bones. Sometimes women are dishonoring to their husbands and they embarrass them in public and call them names. And then notice Proverbs eleven sixteen about a woman specifically. Proverbs eleven sixteen: a gracious woman retaineth honor and strong men retain riches. Now look at the contrast of Proverbs 14 and verse 1. Every wise woman buildeth her house. Think about that. Board by board, brick by brick, every wise woman buildeth her house. But now the contrast. But the foolish woman, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands, board by board by board. I think of some women over the years that have ruined their families, destroyed their homes, and how sad of a testimony that every wise woman buildeth her house. But the foolish plucketh it down with her hands, rather than building, destroying. Look at chapter 18 and verse 22. Again, finding a wife, a godly wife, is a good thing. Whoso findeth a wife, findeth a good thing, and obtaineth favor of the Lord. And again, marrying a godly woman. Marrying a godly man. Chapter 19. Chapter 19. Thank the Lord for mothers and wives who do not put their husbands in debt. Notice chapter 19 and verse 14. Houses and riches are the inheritance of fathers. And a prudent wife is from the Lord. Now, let's notice our text again. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. I want you to find the first of the Old Testament major prophets, Isaiah chapter 61. Isaiah chapter 61. If I mess up on a couple words, it's because I can't see. I'm having a kaleidoscope in my left eye. Time to time that happens, and it's like I'm looking through a prism. Isaiah 61 and verse number 10. The robe of salvation is a good robe for a woman to put on to make her into a godly wife, a godly mother. Isaiah 61, verse 10. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul should be joyful in my God. Why? For he hath clothed me 
with the garments of salvation. Now look over in chapter 64. Chapter 64. Remember when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden. They sinned in the garden, and when they did, all mankind fell. Eve was the first woman in the Bible. God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helpmate suitable for him. And she certainly was virtuous, virtuous, and she was godly until sin entered into her heart. And then her beautiful garments became rags. <coughs> Isaiah 64 and verse number six. But we are all as an unclean thing. And all our righteousness are filthy rags. Remember, Adam and Eve were naked in the garden and were not ashamed. Isaiah, or the book of Genesis tells us. Genesis chapter number one and chapter two. Naked and yet not ashamed. Why? They were innocent. But when they sinned, they covered themselves in fig leaves. And the fig leaves did not work. That was, of course, self-righteousness in their own religion. So but we all, as an unclean thing, we're all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are filthy rags. And we all do fade as a leaf, and our inequities, like the wind, have taken us away. So we need, of course, salvation that comes from the Lord and his grace. Going back to chapter 61 now. Remember when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, God had to cover them with the skins of an innocent animal. Blood had to be shed. That's in typology, a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ who would be crucified and give his life and die for our sins. And by the way, that all began in the garden. Sin began in the garden of Eden, but in the garden of Gethsemane, salvation was beginning when the Lord Jesus said, Father, if be thy will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And so Jesus surrendered, of course, to the crucifixion and to the cross. And so because of that, new garments and new robes, verse 10 again, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord Jehovah. My soul shall be joyful in my God. Why? For he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation, a godly wife, a saved sinner, is so precious in the sight of the Lord. And surely this lady in Proverbs 31 depicts that with her attitude and her attributes and her love for her family and her husband and her children. And as she worked faithfully for her household, he had covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ointment, ornaments, ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with jewels. And then if you will, go to the book of Revelation chapter 19. Revelation chapter 19, how very wonderful that we who know the Lord and come back with the Lord and the battle of Armageddon and as Satan is finally taken care of. And the way that we'll be dressed is what we did with Jesus by receiving him as Savior. We're now clothed in the righteousness of the Lord. Chapter 19 of Revelation. <clears throat> Verse 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come. Aren't you looking forward to that? When Jesus comes and presents us a chaste bride before his father, and his wife, hard for us guys to get that, he's the groom, we're the bride of Christ, had made herself ready, that is, you better be saved before Jesus comes. And by the way, the way that things are happening, he's coming very, very soon. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And then go with me to the New Testament, 
further uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 1. A saved mother is a blessing to God. Now, some of you dear ladies live in a home with a lost man. Maybe you married, you were lost, and you were not a Christian, and then you got saved, and however your husband has chosen not to get saved, well, you have a great responsibility and a great heritage to be mindful that, and I'll show you in a moment, but notice, if you will, 1 Timothy uh, chapter 1 and verse, um, well, if you look at 1 Timothy, it won't work. Try 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 5. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith, that means real faith, not false faith and phony faith, faith. The unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunices, and I am persuaded in thee also. Look, if you will, in chapter 3, 2 Timothy chapter 3. How precious to be brought up in a home of a godly mother. How many men in the ministry can praise the Lord for a godly mother. Think of Susanna Wesley, 19 children. 19 children, two of those 19 children, Charles and Jonathan Wesley, shook two continents for the Lord. And notice now, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. Again, some of you moms that are in the home where a dad doesn't serve the Lord or is not saved, uh, you have a great responsibility, and God will honor that responsibility. Remember, Solomon's mother said, what shall I do for thee? What shall I pray for thee? Uh, how shall I pray for thee? How shall I advise thee, my son? Listen to godly wisdom from a godly mother. And Second uh, Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, to teach your children. They don't come trained. You have to teach them. The rod and reproof brings correction, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother shame. Sometimes the only person at home, especially if you're a single mom, trying to rear your children, what a great responsibility to teach them to bring them up in the truth of God's word, to be the godly example, to see you praying, to have devotions with your children, to discipline them. They don't come trained, and the only way to keep them right on the right path is to get their attention while they're young. The rod and reproof gives wisdom. Uh, a child left to himself bringeth his mother shame. Uh, children don't know how to act. You have to train them. Proverbs 22, or 6.22, uh, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he'll not depart from it. So as a mom, you have a great responsibility. And again, if the dad uh, doesn't want to do the training, you do the training. Uh, for their soul, the Bible says, thou shalt beat them with rod and deliver their soul from hell. Let them know there's judgment. Uh, let them not throw tantrums. Uh, you have to deal with that. It's not easy. It's not easy to rear children, but you have a responsibility to bring them up and the nurture and admonition of the Lord so that they get to know the Lord. Notice what we're talking about here. Again, in verse number 14. Continue thou, uh, continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing them, of whom thou hast learned them, and that from a child, see it? That from a child, devotions with your family, spending time in prayer, not long devotions, obviously, with a little child, but letting them know that Jesus loves them, uh, singing little songs from the Bible, reading the Bible to them, praying with them, now I lay me down to sleep, and uh, praying for the meal, and bring them up with a strong foundation 
by being a godly mom and a godly dad. Why? Notice the verse preceding. Yea, and all that will love godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Why? But evil men and seducers shall wax worse, wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing whom thou hast loved them. You know, many children are a little disconcerned about going to school. They're hearing so many false and phony things, and they're discouraged, and they're frustrated. So you have to reinforce the truth to their children. You are a little boy. God made you a little boy. You're a little girl. God made you a little girl. The world has gone totally mad mad and where parents and teachers used to get used to get together and uh, they would come and discuss things uh, no longer uh, and over the border now I hate to talk about these things but it's necessary it's a necessary evil the democratic party has lost their mind to say that men can be pregnant they're saying that Men can get pregnant. That is a stupid lie out of hell. God made them male and female. Even in the ark, take them male and female. You cannot create without a man and a woman, period. I don't care what the government says. I don't care what's being taught in the school. You must, as a parent, I must, as a preacher, take a stand and be faithful and not fear the government. I fear God, not man. I obey God, not man. And so we as a, as a church and we who know the Lord need to take a stand on what truth is and reinforce your children. Pray much about them. Pray through the course of the day as they're in school and the things that they're being taught and the lies they're being taught. Why is everything coming to a head? Because the devil knows he has a short time. And Jesus is coming. And so all the corruption, someone has to take a stand. Can you imagine, my beloved? Can you imagine when we're gone? Be nobody praying. There'd be nobody witnessing. A car in our parking lot this morning we pulled in. I fell in our parking lot. I knew he wasn't coming to church, but... I walked up and I said, we're open now, you can come in. Oh no, I'm just there. So I gave him a track here, this day, how to go to heaven. We must be about God's business. Time is short, so very short. And, and I'm not trying to be um, alarmist, but time is short. And we must be mindful. That man you sleep next to, that woman you sleep next to, those children you feed, if they don't know the Lord, praying much for their souls. So notice what he says. Paul says, verse 15, and that from a child. You've got to chain them up, beloved. You've got to be, with God's help, a godly mother, robed in his salvation, covered in his separation from the things of the world. This lady was godly and faithful to the Lord. And then, of course, Hannah was a praying mother. Hannah. You know what Hannah means? The name Hannah, we think of little Hannah. <laughs> little Hannah, that mean, her name means grace. Little Hannah. Hannah prayed for a baby. You know the story. She prayed and God gave her a son, Samuel. And God touched her heart in such a special way. She wanted that boy so badly that she was willing to give him back to the Lord. Given it should be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give in your bosom. For the same measure that you might with all, it should be measured to you. She gave her to God, and God gave her back five children. You can't outgive God. And so she prayed for that boy, and God gave her that boy, and she was a praying mother. Are you a praying mother? Do you pray before your family? Okay, maybe your husband is not consistent, uh, but don't, don't malign him to the children. Don't put him down. 
Uh, even if you're divorced, uh, don't put down your husband. Don't divide the family. You just be faithful and be godly. And that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise in the salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Now, 1 Peter chapter 3. So you married a lost man. Or, and by the way, you should not marry a lost man. And by the way, you should not date a lost man. Pray and let God give you a man. Let God give you a man. Let God give you a godly lady. Again, check out the family. How does she treat her dad? What's the mom look like? Are they godly? Do they walk with God? Hey, like begets like, doesn't it? Like begets like. So here we have the formula for a godly wife to a lost husband. Okay, you got saved while you were married. Well, you don't divorce them, get rid of them. But you have a testimony before him. Look at 1 Peter chapter 3. We're studying, by the way, 1 Peter on Wednesday nights. Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husband. We preached a couple months back on the family, you'll remember. And uh, be in subjection to your own husbands. That if any obey not the word, so they've heard the gospel that Jesus died, shed his blood, was buried, rose again, coming again, and that they'll repent from their sin and embrace Jesus, they can be born again. And they reject that. They refuse that. You don't nag them. By the way, you don't push your children to get saved either. You do not push them. Uh, sometimes their hearts become hardened. You think about this. During the millennium reign, when Jesus is ruling and reigning as King of King and Lord of Lord, and Satan has been, pound, been bound in hell for a thousand years, why are people going to rebel? How are they going to rebel? Aren't they all going to be saved? No, they won't. They'll harden their heart. And sometimes a child brought up in a Christian home hardened their heart about Christianity. They hardened their heart because they're watching our example and we don't practice what we preach. It's hard living the Christian life. In fact, you cannot live the Christian life without the power of the Holy Spirit. Neither can I. So living the life daily before them, being the proper testimony that we need to be, uh, salvation is free, living the life cost. Living the life cost. Living the life of a Christian, it costs. You must work at it. Paul said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. For it's God with work in you, both the will and to do his good will. You work out what God has worked in. You want to... Decent body, you have to exercise. You want to know the Bible, you have to read the Bible, study the Bible. Likewise, you wives be in subjection to your own husband, that if any obey not the word, they've heard the gospel, they've rejected the gospel. They also may without the word be won by the conversation. Well, that is, you're not nagging them. The conversation is the behavior of a wife. Well, he doesn't treat me white, right. Well, if he's lost, beloved, He's going to go to hell. And if we could ever get our hearts and minds of the ravages of hell, if we could ever get our hearts and minds, beloved, on the fact that Jesus is coming, and when he comes, the Antichrist is taking over for that seven-year period called the tribulation. Do you realize in the beginning of that seven-year tribulation, Two, listen to this number, two billion souls are going to die at the destruction of the Antichrist. That's why we must be about God's business, doing our part to pass out devotionals, witnessing to our loved ones, praying for them that they're not left behind. If they rejected Christ, they can't get saved because God will send them strong delusion, Paul said to the Thessalonians that they may believe a lie because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. It's a tall order to live the life of a Christian, beloved. 
It's a tall order to be faithful, to let our light so shine before men that they may see our good works and glorify our Father which is in heaven. So while they behold your chaste conversation, verse number two, that is your behavior, same thing, word in verse one, conversation, your behavior with fear, whose adorning let it not be the outward adorning of the plaiting of the hair, wearing of gold and putting on a apparel. Remember, strength and honor are her clothing. So how you dressed, how you dress. I don't go to the mall very often, but going to the mall and looking at these stores that young ladies have to shop at, it's disgusting. How short are shorts? Midriff, you know what I'm talking about. We're in a mixed crowd. But summertime is coming. I guess it's going to come someday. Soon we'll get some summertime. So be modest in your dress. Modest in your dress before the Lord. Who's adorning? Let it not be the outward adorning, the plaiting of the hair, wearing of gold and putting on apparel. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, that which is not corruptible. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 3 now. 1 Timothy chapter, or chapter 1. So again, being modest. Chapter 2. So being modest, dressing like a lady. You know, we used to say when women should wear pants. <clears throat> women shouldn't wear pants. The Bible says a woman's not to put that on that which pertains to a man. But it's not pants anymore. It's skin tight. Leggings. You have to almost walk like this, fellas. And by the way, the first time is, is fair, the second time is sin. It's difficult. You really have to work at being modest as a Christian lady. You really have to work at it. And I know this is divisive. I know that's not popular. But notice what Paul says, please. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also the women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness, with sobriety, not with broidered hair or gold or pearl or costly array, aware, array but which becometh one professing godness, which is with good works. So living a godly life as a godly lady, and then separated from the world, and then being willing to pray. Go back to Proverbs. Be willing to be a prayer warrior. Praying, okay, you're married to a lost man. You have boys and girls, sons and daughters, and they've rebelled against the Lord, and they're no longer serving the Lord and not being faithful. Let's just take our text again, shall we? Proverbs chapter 31. Let's just notice this lady. Verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? Your virtue. Your virtue is so important, beloved. Your testimony. The rearing of your children. The supporting of your husband. Being faithful. And I thank the Lord for the ladies of our church that are faithful, that are godly, that walk with the Lord, that serve the Lord, that witness for the Lord, worship the Lord, spend your wealth with the Lord, are faithful in giving to the Lord. How important, beloved. Last month, again, our offerings down $5,000. $5,000, that's a lot of money. And if we continue on with that, last year it was seven thousand we're going down every month so you have a business you're going out of business so the business of the lord to be faithful to be faithful and give the lord this lady labored 
and she shared her labor with others. Notice, if you will, Proverbs chapter 31 and verse number 20. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. Someone who doesn't even come to our church, who used to come to our church, but they haven't come in almost two years, heard that we were having the missionary family, and they were coming. They were scheduled to show up yesterday, and um, you got me again. But, uh, but they didn't show up because one of their children is very sick. Well, someone heard, I guess they listened to me. Some people listened to me over the Internet that we're having a missionary, this, this lady contacted our church and said, I want to give some money to the missionary family. So, I mean, just think about that. Don't even come to church. There are people who give to our church who don't come to our church. And so you're here, do your part. She stretches forth her hands to the poor. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of the snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Again, her clothing silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. I think of Lot's wife. Lot's wife. Remember, Lot chose to separate from his uncle Abraham. Abraham backslid and went to Egypt. And for 10 years, he was in Egypt away from the Lord. And Lot followed him. And Lot got a taste of the world. The world is not your friend. The world is not our friend. The world will eat us up and, and spit us out. And Lot got caught up in the things of Egypt. And finally, they came away. God had blessed Abraham. God blessed Lot, and there became a division, and they no longer fellowshiped, and that fellowship was broken. And the Bible says that Abraham gave Lot the choice. Now, you choose. You, you make a choice. There shouldn't be any fighting between one another. There should be no division for one another. There should be love one for another, but they were fighting. And Abraham gave Lot the choice. He said, now you choose. You, you choose. And the Bible says that Lot looked out and saw the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, that they were well watered. And they reminded Lot of what? Egypt land. Egypt is always a picture of the world. You know, the world is always beckoning us, always calling us, trying to cater us. So if you're gonna live godly, there's a price that you have to pay. And that price is to be faithful to the Lord. So Lot went to Sodom. Lot became a politician. Lot allowed two of his daughters to marry two lost boys. Lot lost his testimony before those son-in-laws. And finally, God said, I've had enough. And in Genesis 18, Abraham has a visit with the Lord Jesus, what's called an Old Testament theophany. That's a appearance of the Lord Jesus in the flesh. And he comes to Abraham, and Abraham recognized who he is, and two angels come with the Lord Jesus. And Abraham makes a meal for them. And in that 18th chapter, you find the spiritual Christian. And God is fellowshipping in Abraham's home and eating in Abraham's home. And then once again, he gives the pro promise uh, Sarah, you're going to have a baby boy. I'm 90 years old. He's 100. And she laughed. But you know what? Earlier, Abraham laughed. And so you named the boy Isaac, laughter. And that's exactly what happened. God gave them that boy. But then God said, I'm going to go visit Lot. I'm sending my angels to visit Lot. For the cry of that city has come up. You know, God's lo loving, and he's gracious, and he's long-suffering. But he's also a God of judgment. And that's what the tribulation's all about. And that's what the Battle of Armageddon is about. And when the Bible talks about the latter days, 
It talks about wars, rumors of war, famine, pestilence, earthquakes. All these things, beloved, are happening every day in the world. Not only war with Russia, but North Korea coming to South Korea, threatening. China threatening Taiwan. All around the world, havoc and destruction. And God is coming. And God said, his spirit should not always strive with man. And the flood came, judgment came. But then the second judgment came to Sodom and Gomorrah. And you know the story. You may not believe the story, but it's a true story. And God sent those two angels to Lot's door. And they knocked on Lot's door. And Lot said, it, Lot said, please come in. They said, we don't want to come in. We'd rather stay in the street. Why? Because Lot was a backslidden Christian. And a Christian can get so far away from the Lord, they don't read their Bible. They don't fellowship with the Lord. And the Bible says to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God. John said, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passed away in the lust thereof. So God destroyed Noah's day. Only eight made it through. Eight is the number of new beginnings. Today is the 8th of May. You know, I'm a numbers person. I like numbers. Number eight is a new beginning. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we would make up our minds? And you have to make it up. I can't make it up for you. I can't push you. I can't prod you. I can't beg you. But I can certainly pray, and I do. That there comes a time in our life when we become convicted and converted. And the Bible says the love of Christ constrains us that we thus judge, that if one died for all, then we're all dead. That henceforth we should not serve ourselves, but serve him. Lot backslid. Abraham backslid. Abraham came back, but Lot did not come back. So beloved, you can fall into sin or step into sin or go into sin and get it right but people will follow you. So those angels came to Sodom and Gomorrah, and when they knocked on Lot's door to say, Lot, you gotta get out of here. That's a picture that a child of God is not gonna go through the tribulation. Those angels were sent to Sodom to bring out Lot and his family, but now wait a minute. The sad part in all of that, mom, mom, godly mom, is Mrs. Lot. When those angels said, don't look back. Don't go back. Don't look back. You know the story. Those angels eventually came in to Lot's home as they begged them to come in. And while in their home, the men of Sodom came and knocked on the door and said, we'd like to have those men. Now, we're in a mixed group. I'm not going to discuss that. But you know what happened. And you know where they were coming from. And God blinded the minds of those eyes of those men that wanted those angels. And then God said through those angels, you've got to come out. Come out. Be a separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean. I'll receive you to myself. You should be my sons and daughters of me, saith the Lord. Be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Lot's two boys, son-in-laws, he had four daughters. Lot's two son-in-laws, when he said, we've got to flee. Those angels said, you've got to flee. Destruction is coming to these cities. And his two son-in-laws, when Lot said, you've got to get out, <clears throat> they mocked him. Why? Because he lost his testimony. But wait a minute. Not only did he lose his testimony, you can read this in Genesis 19. I read it this morning going through my devotions. His two daughters, who married those two lost boys, were left behind in Sodom and Gomorrah. 
And God sent fire from heaven and destroyed those cities because of the Sodomites. Because man turned their heart against God. And the Bible says in the book of Romans, God gave them up. So what does this have to do with the Mother's Day message, Pastor? Isn't this a Mother's Day message? It is. But moms can be a great influence on your husband. Wives can be a great influence on your husband. Moms can be a great influence on the children to live right and to do right and to encourage your husband to stay right and to do right and to encourage him. I thank the Lord for those of you who encourage me. I'm not looking for any accolades, but from time to time, folks who say, thank you, that was a good message. And I thank the Lord for that. What did it speak to your heart about? And how did it speak to your heart? And, uh, and I'm thankful for that. And thank the Lord. And I pray and I go before the Lord. Lord, what shall I preach? What would the message be? And I pray that God would speak to our hearts. And so the message then, moms, is judgment is coming. And Mrs. Lot, and it records in the New Testament, Jesus said, remember who? Lot's wife. Remember Lot's wife. Those angels said, flee for your life. Turn back. Do not turn back. She turned back. Why did she turn back? She turned back because two of her daughters were left behind. How horrific. How horrible it would be. It's too late when your loved one is in the casket. It's too late when you're on your way to the, to the funeral home and you didn't witness. I'm not trying to put anybody on a guilt trip this morning, but I'm saying time is short. Eternity is long. Oh, that we might pray for our lost children, for our lost loved ones, for our lost fellow workers, that we would have a testimony to make a difference of our backslidden sons and daughters, husbands and wives, and she turned back and turned into a pillar of salt. Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. The salt of the earth. That makes people thirsty. Our lives should make people thirsty for what we have. We're the only hope. Jesus is the hope, but we're the hope for the lost to witness to them and tell them about the Lord. And those two daughters perished, perished, with their husbands. But two of those daughters came out. And it's too graphic to talk about. But how wickedness in their hearts turned their daddy. So think about that. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice and time to come. Shall we stand together? She shall rejoice in time to come. Oh, that we would warn our children. Train them up. Bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Being mindful to our children. While they're young, Jesus comes. They're going to go to heaven. But when they come to the age of accountability, when they know right from wrong, when they know what sin is, then God's going to judge them if he comes and they're not ready. And that's why we must train them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they'll not depart from it. Who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. And then dads, if we would do our part to be the godly leaders that we need to be to our children, treating our wives with respect and with love, allowing our children to see that love and that respect and seeing that daddy reads his Bible, mama and daddy pray together, they pray for that food and thank God for the food. And, and we pray before we go to bed and we thank the Lord. And so, beloved, we're living in the final of the last days. And Jesus is coming. Let's be ready for his coming. Let's not have our loved ones left behind. 
This year we've seen the death and passing of loved ones, family members. Last week, a nephew of mine passed and uh, February, one of our precious members passed, but they went to heaven. They went to heaven. My brother passed, one of my brother, my last brother passed, and he's asked Jesus to be his savior, so he's in heaven. But what about those who don't know the Lord? So may we do our part, beloved. Father, we pray now that we'll be mindful of our testimony. Lord, Paul said we're the only Bible, the only Bible that some will ever read. We're epistles read and known of men. We may not think our neighbors are watching, but they're watching. We may not think our children are listening, but they're listening. We may not think that our fellow workers are watching, but they're watching to be sure. And they may not come up and say it, but they're thinking the question, what's in this Christianity? What's with this Christianity? And Lord, a Christian is one who has Christ living in their lives. Twice born child of God, we then leave the family of Adam and Eve that plunged all mankind into sin and embrace the last Adam, the Lord Jesus as Savior, becoming born again, turning from our self-righteousness and our religion, embracing and getting under his blood Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission for sin. Father, thank you for the precious blood. Thank you for the Lamb of God that took away the sins of the world. And oh God, oh God, for Christ's rejectors, have mercy. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. 8th of May, 129th day of 2022. Preacher, if I died before I make it home, I'm going to heaven. I have that assurance. Jesus is my Savior. Could you raise your hand to that truth? Jesus is my Savior. I know my sins are forgiven. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You may take them down. I never assume that everybody that comes to church knows the Lord. Sometimes we're praying for people to come back to the Lord who've never come to the Lord. But maybe this morning listening or being here and you don't know Jesus as your Savior. You're not sure if you died today, you'd go to heaven. You have some doubt about that. That doubt comes from the Holy Spirit. That's called conviction. Preacher, pray for me this morning. I'm not sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven. I'm concerned. Would you remember me in closing prayer? Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Here's my hand. Thank you. You may take the bell. I'm a Christian. I'm a mom. I'm a wife. Housewife. I'm a dad. Mom. I'm concerned about my loved ones. I'm concerned about my family members. Preacher, would you remember me in closing prayer this morning that I'll be effective in my witnessing for the Lord? Pray for me. Have a lost husband. Have lost children. Have backslidden family members. Would you pray for me that I'll be more effective as a witness for the Lord? Pray for me this morning. My hand's up with yours. Let me take them down. Have unspoken requests in my home, my marriage, maybe my family. Would you remember me in closing prayer this morning, preacher? I have some needs in my heart, some unspoken requests. Would you remember me in closing? Remember me this morning. All over the place. And Father, we are a needy people. We are so needy. And we're thankful that we have a Savior who loves us. A Heavenly Father who watches over us the Holy Spirit who is indwells us. And oh, Father, save the soul that's nearest hell. Reclaim your children who've stepped away. And Lord, strengthen us. Strengthen honor are her clothing. Strengthen us, Lord, 
to keep on keeping on and being faithful. And thank thee, Lord, for these who've raised their hearts to heaven. Arms up, hands up, that I could see. Many hands, a sea of hands. And Lord, you know their hearts. You know what's happening in their homes, in their lives. And Lord, I pray that you'll meet that need this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We're singing number? 270. 270. Need to come for prayer. Would you come on the first stanza? 270. So simple, just as I am. Without one plea, I come. Would you come this morning? God spoke to your heart. Would you come maybe pray for a lost loved one? Pray for the needs to the Lord. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest me come to thee, O Lamb, I come, I come. I come just as I am and waiting now to rid my soul of one dark blot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come. I come just as I am, though tossed about with many a conflict, men fightings and fears within, without, O oh Lamb of God, I come. I come just as I am, poor wretched blind, sight riches healing of the mind. I need in thee to find. as I am, thou will receive, will welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I believe, O Lamb, I Please be seated for a moment. 